To take a tangent on a tangent, uh, since you mentioned philosophy may be potentially more about the questions and maybe mathematics is about the answers, I have to say you are a legend on Math Overflow, which is like Stack Overflow, but for math. You're ranked number one all time on there with currently over 246,000 reputation points. How do you approach answering difficult questions on there? Well, Math Overflow has really been one of the great pleasures of my of my life. I've really enjoyed it. I mean, and I've learned so much from interacting on Math Overflow. Is um, I've been on there since 2009, which was shortly after it started. I mean, it wasn't exactly at the start, but a little bit later. Um, and uh, and I think I, it gives you the stats for how many characters I typed, and I don't know how many million it is, but uh, uh, this enormous amount of uh, um, time that I've spent thinking about those questions, and it has really just been amazing to me. How I, do you find the questions that grab you, and how do you go about right. answering them? So I'm interested in any question that I find interesting. So, And it's not all questions. So sometimes... Certain kinds of questions just don't appeal to me that much. So you go outside of set theory as well. So I think when I first joined Math Overflow, I was I was basically one of the only one of the few people in logic who was answering. I mean, there were other people who know some logic, particularly from category theory and other parts of mathematics, um, that aren't in the most traditional parts of logic, but they were answering some of the logic questions. So I really found myself able to make a contribution in those very early days by engaging with the logic-related questions. But there weren't many logic people asking questions either. But what I found was that there was an enormous amount of interest in topics that were logic adjacent. So a question would arise, you know, in group theory, but it had a logic aspect or an analysis or whatever, and there would be some logic angle on it. And what I found was that I was often able to figure out an answer um, by learning enough about that other subject matter. This is what was so rewarding for me is because basically I, I had to learn enough my expertise, my main expertise was logic, but someone would ask a question, you know, that, that was about, say, the axiom of choice in this other subject matter mm -hmm. or the continuum hypothesis or something like that in, an, in the other subject matter. And I would have to learn enough about that other subject and the context of the question in order to answer, and I was often able to do that. And so I was quite happy to do that. And, and also I learned a lot by doing that because I had to learn about these other problem areas. And so it really allowed me to grow enormously as a mathematician. To give some examples of uh, questions you've answered, what are some reasonable sounding statements that are independent of ZFC? What are the most misleading alternate definitions in top mathematics? Is the analysis as taught in universities, in fact, the analysis of definable numbers, solutions to the continuum hypothesis? most unintuitive application of the axiom of choice, non-trivial theorems with trivial proofs, <laughs> reductio ad absurdum, or the contrapositive. <laughs> what is a chess piece mathematically? We should say you've worked quite a bit on infinite chess, which we should definitely talk about. It's an awesome. You've worked on so many fascinating things. Has philosophy ever clarified mathematics? Why do we have two theorems when one implies the other? And of course, just as an example, you've given a really a great, almost historical answer on the topic of the continuum hypothesis. And maybe that's a good place to go. We've touched it a little bit, but it'd be nice to lay out what is the continuum uh, hypothesis that Cantor struggled with. And I would love to also speak to the psychology of his, his own life story, his own struggle with it. It's, it's The human side of mathematics is also fascinating. 